Welcome back to AM Northwest. We sure appreciate you watching. Well, our first guest this morning has written songs that have been sung for decades and performed by dozens of artists. Here to share how rock and roll came to be with his new memoir, Living the Rock and Roll Dream, we welcome to AM Northwest singer, songwriter, and producer, Buzz Kaysen. Good to see you this morning. Hey, great to see you. So honey. are you living the rock and roll dream, Buzz? Just keep on living it, yeah. <laughs> so tell us about your start, how you began as a teenager, right? Yeah, I started out in East Nashville, Tennessee, with a band called The Casuals. Mm -hmm. We were considered Nashville's first rock and roll band. And we backed Jerry Lee Lewis on a bunch of his shows. And then Brenda Lee picked us up to go on and be her band for several years. So, now, she was yeah. an incredible, she's an incredible singer. What what can you tell me about working with her? Well, she, she was 12 years old when we started. Had this wow. powerful voice. And uh, there she is in Hawaii. We were, uh, we, we toured Hawaii and Alaska right around 1960. We toured all 50 states. And uh, she was a tremendous entertainer. And of course, she had I'm Sorry, I Want to Be Wanted, a bunch of uh, huge hits. You've had party. many hits as well, including the, the one that we most famously know, Everlasting Love. Yes, that's been the best one for me. That's been a good one. Tell me about, how, do you remember how it came to be? Well, 1967, uh, my partner and I, Matt Gaden, were producing a uh, artist, Robert Knight, and we needed one more song. And we thought this was going to be a B-side, so we spent about 20 minutes. A B-side, meaning it wasn't the <coughs> best choice, is that's that what you're right. saying? It, so the A-side has the best choice, the B-side right. has the uh, lesser choice. That's right. In those days, you did a three-hour session and cut four songs, so you'd have two singles, you know, 245, so we needed one more song. And we wrote this, and uh, the rest is history. It, it turned out to be the best one on the session. Well, tell us who sung it, and then your favorite rendition. Well, uh, Robert Knight had a hit on it in 68, then Carl Carlton in 74, uh, which is kind of the definitive dance version, then Gloria Estefan in the 80s. Yeah, Gloria Estefan. And, and I'm, I'm sorry, in, in the, Rachel Sweet had it in the 80s and Gloria Estefan in the 90s, and then you too recorded it along about the end of the 90s. My favorite version is still the original, oh. Robert Knight's version. Oh, yeah. nice. So when yeah. we talked that you mentioned uh, that you've met, dealt with Elvis, what was he like to work with? Well, I met Elvis when I was with the Casuals in a, at a radio station, WHBQ, in Memphis. Uh, and uh, there you see us with Elvis, and uh, it was at Dewey Phillips' show, who was the first disc jockey to play Elvis. And we did our interview and turned the corner right outside the, the studio and ran right into Elvis. And we immediately hit it off because he could kind of relate to band members. And he said, I just bought a place out in Whitehaven. You ought to go see it. And it was You were doing was, your Elvis impersonation there. That, so that was, yeah. yeah I, I, I always got to get my lip in the right place. So what was he like, though, from your experience? Uh, well, yeah, he was a very, very humble, very sincere uh, guy, just uh, real friendly. And we later on jammed with him out at his house in California. Wow. And, and that was pretty special. And we played music for hours out there. And uh, then later on, I was able to sing background on some of his recordings. He wasn't there, but I, I did so. I, I was a background singer for years. And, and you I also worked sing. with Jerry Lee Lewis. Yes, that's right, the, the killer. <laughs> we would open shows for Jerry Lee when uh, he would be, uh, he might stop and go to see a movie or something and just take his time getting to the to the. Uh, would you have party. to play or perform until we he got would, there? We would play, and it got a little brutal, you know. We want Jerry, but, but uh, we... <laughs> We oh, managed, we managed they, to hold the they, crowd. that you felt, oh, they don't want us, they uh, want Jerry? Well, we, we held him. We, we, we rolled around on the stage and did all the rock and roll antics of the day, you know, so uh, Jerry was fun to work with. But, uh, but always late, you're saying? Well, I mean, most of the time. All uh, right, Chubby Checker. Chubby Checker was it. Did, we did the twist with Chubby. That, that photo there is in Hawaii. Uh, uh, we did, it, did, he headlined a tour with Brenda Lee, Chubby Checker, Fabian. Oh, yeah. And Dwayne Eddy and uh, all kinds of folks. We were on a 30-day tour, one of the kind of the Dick Clark tours where you'd do one-nighters. We played here, I believe. Played. So in living the rock and roll dream, give me some of the most ama incredible things you've done. Well, um, I think probably it, it, it's a, a conglomeration of folks because the fact that I met so many artists and I took so many pictures, I'm so thankful I did, and it's just full of pictures and uh, stories, inside stories. Uh, probably one of my favorites is too is is, uh, is discovering Jimmy Buffett in the early 70s. Oh, wow. There's some stories about that and uh, guys like this man, that that guy right there, Jimmy and Johnny Cash and. Uh, just a, a, Do you ever have a just, margarita with Jimmy Buffett? Or? Uh, well, I actually t turned him down last time because I was on a diet. We were backstage. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> he seems like a well, continually it, party it, it kind of really guy. Sure. He's really not, folk, oh. folks. He's he, he had his exercise bike backstage and everything, but they were having a few shots before the show. But uh, we go way back when I a was few shots. I, He's I was a paying him 150 a week uh, to be a songwriter, uh -huh. and he makes that every second. Now, yeah. I think. <laughs> and what I think is really interesting, you're the voice of Alvin the Chipmunk. I, I was uh, living in uh, Los Angeles at the time, working for Liberty Records for Snuffy Garrett, and uh, we had an opportunity to do a uh, Chipmunks Meet the Beatles. <laughs> and so, so I was chosen to do Alvin, and then later on we did, uh, when I moved back to Nashville, we did Urban Chipmunk. Urban which was, Chipmunk. was kind of like an urban cowboy. Oh, gotcha. Tribute. And I got to be Alvin again, so it, it was fun. And you're clearly not going to retire anytime soon. Uh, not, uh, somebody said, retire from what? <laughs> <laughs> You're just having a good time. Yeah, that's right. Well, we want to tell folks again, the book is called Living the Rock and Roll Dream. You're going to be performing at the Tillamook Manor, right? That's right. As well, uh -huh. so we're going to put information on our website. But you're coming back later in the show, and you're going to perform Everlasting Love for us. That'll be great. Which is yes. awesome. So thank yes. you for doing that. So hang on. Thank you. Welcome back to AM Northwest. You know, it's the song that's been covered more than 50 times. Can you believe it? Here to perform his hit, Everlasting Love, is Buzz Kaysen. Hearts go astray, leaving hurt when they go. I went away just when you needed me so. Filled with regret, I come back begging you. Forgive, forget, where's the love we once knew? Open up your eyes, then you'll realize here I stand with my everlasting love. Need you by my side. Girl, to be my bride, you'll never be denied. Everlasting love from the very start. Open up your heart, be a lasting part of everlasting love. Need a love to last forever. Need a love to last forever. Sing along, the lyrics are easy. I hear you, little angels out there. Where life's river flows, no one really knows till someone's there to show the way to lasting love. Like the sun shines, endlessly it shines. You always will be mine. It's eternal love. When other loves have gone, ours will still be strong. We have our very own everlasting love. Need a love to last forever. Need a love to last forever. I need a love to last me forever. Need a love to last forever. Awesome. I've got, I've got to Thank ask you. you, I'm always blown away by someone who stays in the business for a long time. What's the secret to having everlasting success in uh, the music business? you got to be a little nuts, a little crazy. <laughs> no, a little I, nuts? I, yeah, you, uh, use it or lose it. Just right. keep, keep on playing. We keep on writing and performing, and it's the folks that keep us going to the fans. And, and when you when you come up with a concept for a song, what is it that, can you think of unusual, like, are, have you been at a restaurant and, and maybe the waitress inspired you, or what's been the latest inspiration you've had for your songs? Oh, I don't know the latest. I did write an idea down on, on a napkin the other day, so I can't remember what it was. But, <laughs> but <laughs> That's got, why you got to write it but down. But I've got the napkin, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so I know that you're performing in town, so we wanted to mention that, and we're going to tell folks it's a Tillamook uh, Manor. That's right. You can go to my website, buzzcason.com, and it, it gives a little map to all the places we're playing. We're and, and you have a CD c coming out? We do have one coming out on Plowboy Records in, in January called Troubadour Heart. 
in January. And it, it's also available already from Plowboy Records. So, and the uh, one lesson you impart to all aspiring young musicians out there would be? Um, sing from your heart, write from your heart uh, what, what you feel. Don't try to be somebody else and just uh, do your own thing. Awesome. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. It was a, really a privilege having you here. It's great being here. Thank you. Bye.